All right, we're going to continue on our next section, um, or same section, which we have is 33.2C. Um, this is example number two, and also the takeoff of what we did in 3.2B, number two, fuel economy of two or 2021 vehicles. And here's the fuel economy of city versus highway miles. Now, Using our TI-80 calculator, if you did not type this in, we're going to find the um, least square regression line. I'm going to write that below. And in doing so, we can go to our edit feature. List 1 is going to be the city fuel economy. List 2 is going to be the highway fuel economy in miles per gallon. So we go to second calculate. And right here, oops, sorry, click stat, apologize, calculate 8, going down. And we have list 1, list 2 again. And we're going to calculate these values. All right. So when we do that, we find out that our Y hat, all right, predicted values um, of highway fuel economy miles per gallon is going to equal our Y intercept 0 0.608. Um, we'll go four plus our slope of 1.264. And we'll multiply that by explanatory variable, which is city fuel economy miles per gallon miles. All right. We can also see that our R squared value um, from this, if we have our diagnostic on, is going to equal 0.841. And our R value, our R value is going to be 0.917. Okay. Um, we can see that right there. So let's go first and let's interpret both of these values and find out what they give us. So the first one, let's interpret the R squared value. Well, if you remember, the R squared value gives us and tells us about this value is going to be a percent. So about 84.1% of the variability of what? Of the highway fuel economy me, um, is accounted for the highway fuel economy is accounted for by the least squares regression line given right there that's what we know so about this is a percent um 84.1 percent of the variability all right so the change of the highway fuel economy is accounted for by the least squares regression line and that's what we know now, what does the R value tell us? Well, the R value tells us something a little bit different. It just tells us that the relationship, the relationship between um, city fuel economy and highway fuel economy is fairly strong right fairly strong or coming is fairly strong oops i can't write fairly strong positive linear relationship and that's what we know there, okay? So it just tells us the direction, um, which is positive, tells you that it's going to be fairly strong because it's pretty close to one. Um, and it's going to be, a, a, if we were talking about a linear, it doesn't tell us that it is a line, but if it were a line, that's what it would be. It would go in a positive direction, and it's fairly strong. Now, finally, what is our S value? Well, our S value, they say, is going to be 2.786. So what is that? Well, S is the standard de deviation, once again, of the residuals. Okay, and so what does that mean? Well, when we're writing this out, um, the standard deviation of residuals says that um, <clears throat> the um, highway fuel economy all right, the highway fuel economy typically 
varies by 2.786 miles per gallon, all right, from the predicted, I'm going to send this out, from the predicted fuel economy, or highway fuel economy, me from where do we get that from the least squares regression line that's what that s tells us that the highway fuel economy the actual man we should put that in there the actual highway fuel economy typically varies by 2.78 miles per gallon from the predicted value highway fuel economy value um, from the least squares regression line and that's what we know okay um and that's it that's that's what we got so once again, another example of how to find the least squares regression line using your calculator, how to find and interpret the R squared value, the R value, and also this S value, um, which is given, which is the standard deviation of our residuals. Okay, so that's what we have, and I hope this helps you out. Well, good luck, good luck and God bless in the rest of your problems.